What's happening, VC DC here? I hope you guys are doing well. I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of shows that I went to recently, last month. Uh, it was, I think I actually went to, it was like four shows within that same week. Um, but I'm actually going to talk about just two of them for now, since they're kind of related. And not to mention, I now have a 15 minute time limit on my videos for some reason. Which is pretty much bullshit, but you know, what are you going to do? So I gotta kind of move this along quickly. First of all, I went and checked out Raven and Diamond Head uh, at a place called DNA Lounge here in San Francisco. One of my favorite venues I've been going to for many years. And then just a few nights later, I went and checked out Death Angel and Heathen, who were playing just a few doors down from the DNA Lounge. Um, another one of my favorite clubs, Slims. Anyway, so Diamond Head and Raven. If you're not familiar with those bands, but I'm thinking, I mean, if you're into metal, I find that hard to believe. But just in case, um, Diamond Head and Raven, two highly influential bands, two really important bands, both coming out of the new wave of British heavy metal movement, uh, which when you think of that, you think of, of course, Iron Maiden, Def Leppard, who were the most popular and successful bands to come out of that scene. But there was as well a whole slew of other bands such as Diamond Head and Raven uh, among many others who were just as important, just as influential uh, but of course never got the credit that they deserve and never, certainly never re reached the level of success that bands like Maiden and Def Leppard reached or even the bands that they influenced. Um, they were a huge influence on that next wave of metal mid-80s, you know, the thrash metal bands, Metallica, Megadeth Slayer, bands like that were really influenced, heavily influenced by bands like Diamond Head and Raven. In fact, I think that's pretty much why Metallica started Metallica, was because of Diamond Head. That was the band they were infatuated with. Uh, actually, Lars was at the show the other night, too. Um, just hanging out. Anyway, the show was on a Wednesday night, so it was a little bit dead at first, unfortunately. Uh, which had me a little concerned. I was concerned about how SF was going to represent. I mean, you have two legendary bands coming to town, and the last thing I wanted to experience was walking to the, into the venue and seeing just a handful of people, which would have been pathetic. Um, but fortunately, you know, a lot more people started to show up at the last minute, and the place started to fill up. Uh, there was two opening bands, a uh, band by the name of Owl, who I think are from, actually, they're from here, they're in Oakland. And... Um, the other band was Vulture, V-O-L-T-U-R-E, Vulture, and they're from Virginia, if I'm not mistaken. And that actually features uh, Ryan from Municipal Waste. Um, two really good bands, straight up throwback bands, throwback to the old New Wave of British heavy metal bands. You know, a lot of double bass, dual lead, shredding, high shrill vocals, the whole deal, but they're really good at what they did. Anyway, minutes before Raven hit the stage, they were up next. That's when people started to show up, and again, it started to feel like an actual show now. When the energy was high in the crowd, uh, I went up to the front. I was sitting, in, I was standing in the front, right up against the stage, and the mix was perfect. It sounded amazing up in front. So Raven Sound has always been that classic new wave of British heavy metal sound. I mean, if you're familiar with Maiden, very similar to the first couple of Maiden records, that kind of sound. Just that really straightforward, kind of blues based rock and roll heavy metal, but really souped up. And, uh, you know, obviously there's a billion bands that do that kind of thing and have been doing that kind of thing for many years. But what makes Raven stand out so much is the fact that they execute that music perfectly. I mean, if you're going to listen to something like that, you want to listen to somebody like Raven because they, nobody does it better. And, you know, they just. They have, a, they have a certain level of energy that they bring to the table that just uh, makes that music so exciting. And I mean, the musicianship is top notch, and just you know, their dynamics, all these really cool breaks and riffs and hits that make the music even more exciting. Um, three piece band, guitar, bass, and drums. Uh, the Gallagher brothers, Mark and John, on guitar and bass. Uh, John Gallagher sings and plays bass. Um, the original drummer, Rob Hunter, Wacko Hunter, no longer in the band. That, that was one of my favorite drummers from back in the day. Um, he's, I mean, he's been out of the band for many, many years, but uh, the guy who replaced him, uh, it's, it's uh, 
Joe ha uh, Hasselbander, who is just a fucking monster drummer. I mean, I've heard him on the records for many years, but seeing him live, I've become an even uh, just a bigger fan of his playing. It's just a monster. But um, they killed. They absolutely slayed the crowd. I, they exceeded my expectations. I didn't know what to expect. I've seen many old school bands, you know, either on reunion tours or just bands, you know, they never stop playing, but they're just, it's, you know, decades later, and it's it's always hit and miss. Some of them sound better than others. Some of them are just really pathetic, and some surprisingly sound amazing, like Raven. Um, I mean, honestly. The, I did not detect anywhere on their chops whatsoever. I mean, their chops have not diminished in the slightest. I mean, they sound like they did back in the 80s, just full of energy from, from the beginning to the end of the show. Um, Mark Gallagher, fantastic guitar player, just you know, ripping, soloing, and, and just incredible riffing. And just jumping around the stage, you know, endlessly, just not missing a beat. Um, John Gallagher, a bass player, just got that killer Steve Harris finger style and just just ripping. And his voice was even more impressive. I mean, he can still hit those high notes after all these years, which is really impressive. I mean, there's not many bands from back in the day that can still hit those high notes. I mean, even Tom from Slayer can't do it. Most bands just drop the keys of their songs because they can't hit any of those notes. John was killing. It was unbelievable. Um, and again, just fucking ripping on bass at the same time. A little headset mic on, which is kind of comical. And again, fucking Joe Hasselvander. Unbelievable. I mean, just had that old school vibe and mojo, and just that bottom swing in his playing, just just incredible double bass chops, but again, more importantly, the feel. You know, and their energy, I mean, they're known for their live shows and how just energy filled they are. Uh, I mean, they even coined the term athletic rock. And, you know, <laughs> it's like in some ways they're kind of still stuck in the 80s, and, you know, with some of the over-the-top antics. You know, they, they wear this, well, they, a lot, back in the day they used to wear, like the drummer Rob used to wear a full-on hockey mask and shoulder pads and shin guards. Uh, I think Mark had some shin guards on. You know, it's just part of their act. That's part of who they were. I could tell that they are just still just so passionate about playing this music and playing with each other and still inspired after all these years and you can tell that's what it's about they just really love what they're doing and that's you know that's inspirational really but anyway the the set was fucking stellar they just played all the best shit it was just a really well put together set i mean a really lengthy set at that but uh you know they Rock until you drop, faster than the speed of light. Um, you know, live at the Inferno, they played stuff from the later records. So it was just a really fucking great set. They stole the show, hands down, stole the show. And I just was thinking to myself, I don't know how anybody, even Diamond Head, could top what Raven did. And that's exactly how it felt when Diamond Head hit the stage. I think everybody felt that way about it. I think just Raven just sucked the life out of everybody and the energy and by the time Diamond Head took the stage everybody just it, the crowd thinned out a little bit and just everything felt a little more lethargic the enthusiasm was just maybe a little less than uh, I mean people that were still there were excited it's just again it's just, just one of those things I think Raven should have headlined the whole show but uh, but but Diamond Head killed they were fucking awesome I mean from the downbeat all the way to the end of the night they, they had great energy they were playing really well um so there's, you know, they didn't do anything wrong. I think by the third or fourth song, they kicked into like a faster song, and, that, and that's when they started to get a little more momentum, and people started to get a little more excited, a little more filled with energy. Um, of course, when they got to Am I Evil, everybody went fucking insane. Um, they played incredibly well. Again, the band sounded super tight. Of course, the only original member is Brian Tatler, and he sounded great. The singer they had was really good. He, you know, just really strong voice. I don't, I can't remember his name, but, uh, but all, all in all, just really great. It was just great to hear all that, all those classic songs live. It was just, it was again, it was definitely kind of a nostalgic thing. But I mean, again, with Raven, it, it felt more like seeing them for the first time. It was like they were a new band or something. All in all, just a fucking incredible night of music. Um, 
you know, it was great to see a lot of people from back in the day, I mean, people that I knew, and a lot of people that I didn't know, but I know their faces from spending many, many nights back in the day in Ruthie's Inn and The Stone and on Broadway and The Map at these clubs going to see all these bands back in the day. So it was kind of felt like a high school reunion in some way. So it's just good to be around all those people again and um, just a lot of fun, good times. It's just basically a documentary tells their story. Um, this is a uh, two DVD set. Comes with a little little booklet as well. Uh, so you've got the documentary on disc one, about three hours long, 14 songs from 1982 to present. Exclusive interviews, disc two, five full versions of songs from the documentary, seven extra songs, 20 minutes of interviews, studio footage, and Raven Lunacy. That's good times, people. I also picked up a Raven shirt. Rock Until You Drop tour shirt. Not the best t-shirt design, but I uh, just wanted to have something from the show.